I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Luke 2.10. celebrations each year. Advent, where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then Easter, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And this first Sunday in December, we're entering into the Advent season as we remember what God did for us through Jesus Christ. Before we get started this morning, how about if you and I bow for a word of prayer, and let's ask God's blessing and touch upon our time together. Father, thank you for this opportunity to share the Word of God, and I pray you would help us block out any distractions that might hinder us from receiving your message. Father, we all have responsibilities we have to do later on during the day, and we all tend to think back about things in the past from time to time. 
But I just pray you would help us to truly live in the moment and worship you in spirit and truth. And pay attention to what you have for us in the word at this time. Block out any hindrance, Father, that might harm us or keep us away from hearing your word. We ask your touch, your blessing on us all. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might understand the spiritual truth that you have for us today. We ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Ladies out there, especially you moms, can you remember the first time you found out that you were pregnant? For the very first time. Perhaps you were worried and started wondering, am I going to be a good mother? Can I carry this baby full term? What's it going to be like having a child, having a life that I'm going to be responsible before? And then there was that dreaded morning sickness that you got early on in your pregnancy. You were sick, you had to throw up, you were nauseated, it was so hard, but eventually it passed, the baby started to grow, and can you remember the first time you felt that baby kicking? husband perhaps put his hand on your stomach and you could feel the baby kicking and it was so exciting that you knew there was a life in there wanting to work its way out and then you had that child and before you knew it you were staring at this brand new baby boy or baby girl it used to be you didn't know what the sex of the baby would be until the baby was actually born but now with the different methods they have and with ultrasound and all that, they can tell if it's a boy or a girl ahead of time. But you used to have to wait in the older days. And here you had this child. And as a new dad for the very first time when my daughter was found, I found the truth that a baby changes everything. You looked at this little child and cooing in the crib and smiling back up at you. You had to change diapers, you had to give them a bottle, you had to feed them and take care of them. And all of a sudden there's this little life that's completely dependent upon you. Before it was about a married couple, you and me and me and you. And now everything shifts to this precious little life you've been given. Folks, a baby changes everything, is it not? Back to two years ago, there was a beautiful gospel song written about the Christmas birth of Jesus. And the name of it was, A Baby Changes Everything. And God changed everything when he sent Jesus Christ into the world to be born of a virgin, to live among men, and become our Savior. So if you would, turn over with me to the book of Luke. We're going to be taking our text this morning out of the book of Luke. And we're going to be taking a look at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. Luke chapter 1. It's interesting, both Matthew and Luke are the two evangelists, the two gospel writers, that talk about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. So in Luke chapter 1, hopefully you're, you're with me there now in your Bible, Luke chapter 1 tells us in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee. Immediately, folks, were thrown out of the natural into the supernatural. God, who has always existed from eternity past into eternity all the way in the future, God chooses to act in history. And to notice that he says it sends the angel Gabriel. Gabriel's name literally means God is a mighty warrior. El for God and Gabor for a warrior, a strong man, a mighty man of valor, a warrior. Gabriel's name means God is a mighty warrior. You know, Scripture tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that God exists, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. A lot of people these days have the trouble with supernatural and things like that. But Scripture clearly tells us that God exists, and He has angels that do His bidding. So in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Verse 27 tells us, To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
Notice twice in verse 27, Gabriel sent to a virgin, and the virgin's name was Mary. As Christians, as Orthodox believers, we believe in the literal virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. People say, well, I have trouble with that because I've never seen that happen. Nor will you ever will. But God had his son born in a miraculous way to prove who he was and to give his favor upon his people. So Mary is clearly a virgin. And notice she is Mary. She's betrothed to a man named Joseph who's a descendant of David. This is so important because the Messiah was prophesied to come in the line of David, be born in the lineage of David, to sit upon David's throne and be king forever and ever. David's throne in the time of the Old Testament was when Israel was the strongest. All the nations around Israel were subdued by David, and David built the kingdom of Israel up to its height and then handed that kingdom off to his son Solomon. And we're familiar with all the wealth of Solomon and the glory that he had when he was ruling Israel. So here the angel comes to the virgin, and look at verse 28. It says, The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. It's literally you who are highly graced. We don't know why God chose Mary other than a pure act of His sovereign grace that she would be the one that would carry the Christ child. Look at Mary's reaction, and I think you and I would react the same way. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Some versions say she was afraid. Wouldn't you be afraid and all of a sudden a powerful angel appeared in your midst? We don't know how tall Gabriel was or how large he was. We didn't know what kind of light was shining around him, but no doubt he probably lit up the whole room where she was, and so fear would be a natural reaction. But look what the first thing Gabriel says to her. Verse 30, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. Folks, do you realize that every time an angel appears in the Bible to a human being, the first thing they say is, Don't be afraid? You and I don't be, need to be afraid of the work of God in our lives. We don't be afraid, have to be afraid when we pass through various trials and difficulties. David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. David also said in another psalm, what time I am afraid, I will trust in God. So the angel says, don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. God has given Mary grace and favor for a specific role in history to bear the Christ child. He goes on in the next verse, verse 31, and says, You will be with child and give birth to a son, a baby boy. She knows ahead of time before she's even conceived. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Folks, did you know that Jesus' name literally means salvation? It's from the Old Testament equivalent, Joshua or Yeshua, which literally means salvation. Salvation is not, not found in following a specific code or keeping a bunch of rules or facts or things like that or in any kind of philosophy. Salvation is found in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus would grow up and live a sinless life. He would be the perfect sacrifice that would one day die on a cross to make a complete and full payment for your sin and for my sin. Just like Mary found grace, God gives us grace. And God tells us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the free gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name of Jesus. Now look what he says about this child. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Who is the Most High? Almighty God himself. 
Yahweh or Jehovah in the Old Testament. So here you see two members of the Godhead at work in the birth of Jesus Christ. The Christ child himself and God most high, the father of Jesus Christ. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He's in the ancestral line of David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end. Folks, when Jesus came, he said, Behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. The kingdom of God is within you. Jesus came to inaugurate the kingdom of God, to implore his kingdom all over the entire earth, and one day to come and reign over the kingdom of God forever and ever as we enter into the eternal state. When well, Mary's hearing all this, I'm sure she's completely overwhelmed. Just like you ladies, you moms were overwhelmed when you first found out you were pregnant. And so she asked a question, how will this be? Look at verse 34. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The old King James says, I do not know a man. Well, that word know is the same word used back in Genesis where it said Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and bore a son. Cain and Abel, okay? So it's the idea of intimate knowledge there and everything. And Mary says, I'm a virgin. How can this kind of happen? She just has a humble question that she asks the Lord. And the angel's right there with the answer. Folks, when you have a question, I guarantee you God will have the answer. Years ago, there was a song that said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. And Jesus has the answers to your problems and my problems, your trials and my trials, trials, your dilemmas and my dilemmas. He has the answer. And here the angel answers Mary, verse 35. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. There's the third member of the Trinity right there. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's why we have the three interlocking circles here and our emblem on the cross, symbolic of one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. There's God the Father, the Most High, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy One, Jesus, to be born, will be called the Son of God. The only unique Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So what a beautiful thing to see the Trinity working together to bring about the Christ child in order for Him to come to be our Savior. And then the angel tells her in verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. Folks, it's so cool to see how God is working here because Elizabeth is already pregnant and she's carrying John the Baptist. She's six months along when the angel announces to Mary that she's going to conceive and bear Jesus. And we know from the gospel accounts that John the Baptist is the forerunner who goes to prepare the way to introduce Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Remember when Jesus came to be baptized by John the Baptist? John looked at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Just as the blood of a lamb would cover over our sins for a year at a time in the Old Testament, the blood of lamb, above the blood of the lamb, Jesus would make a complete and full redemption for each one of us. And truly, that's what it is. She's barren. Why? And then look at verse 37, one of my favorite verses in Scripture. For nothing is impossible with God. Say that with me along with me right out of your Bible. For nothing is impossible with God. Folks, God can do anything. In the Old Testament, it says, is anything too hard for the Lord? And the implied answer is by no means. God created everything, spoke everything into existence. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God can do anything. Psalm 115 says, our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Nothing is impossible with God. And now look at Mary's very, very humble response in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, I'm the Lord's handmaid, your older Bible say. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Isn't that really cool? He announces to Mary what he's going to do. She's going to have a child. It's going to be a boy. And he will eventually be the savior of the world. Well, what happens when a lady first finds out for the first time she's pregnant? She tells her husband. She tells her mom and dad. She tells her cousins. She tells all her friends. Today, she puts a big announcement in all capital letters on Facebook. Any, every social media, TikTok, whatever she can do, she puts it on. Why? She wants to announce that good news. So Mary decides first thing she's going to do is go tell Elizabeth to go tell one of her cousins about what's happening. So it says in verse 39, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. She's excited. She wants to get there. She's in a hurry. I tell you one thing I've learned in dealing with my wife, Carol, when Carol's in a hurry, I better get out of the way. She's got something she wants to do. She's going to pursue it and do it. I better get out of the way. And if I try to go into the kitchen when she's cooking, I get that look. And I know I have to back off and behave myself because I'm where I shouldn't be. Here's Mary in a hurry, okay? Now look at this in verse 40. Where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Now look closely at this. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. Wow. No doubt the baby was also able to hear. I know people have done some studies and they do believe that children can hear in the womb. Don't ask me how, but the closeness to the mother, the connection with the umbilical cord, the way sound travels, babies can hear and you can actually talk to a baby when they're in the womb. I guarantee you're not going to have too much of an in-depth conversation because the baby can't talk back to you. They're not that far along, but they can hear what you say. So you can talk to a baby while they're growing inside of you. I think that's pretty neat. The baby leaped in her womb. And look at this. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know what's interesting? When people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak positive things, they speak true things, and they speak in ways that are clearly and easy to be understood. Look at this. The babe leaped in her womb, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. Wow, you have really been marked out, Mary. You're somebody special. God is going to use you in a way he's never used anybody before. You're going to have a virgin birth and bear our blessed Savior. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why? The Savior of the world. Folks, do you realize you can study all the gospel accounts, you can study the New Testament, and you'll never see a single place where Jesus committed any sin or did anything wrong? He did everything in agreement with the Old Testament law. He honored God and served God. It says in 1 Peter he was a person whose guile was never found in his mouth. He never cut anybody down except the false religious leaders that were leading people astray. He spoke life to people and was totally positive. That's who he is. That's why he is so blessed. And being pure and holy qualified him to be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Praise God, God had him born in a special way to be the only true Savior. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. We have to go through Him as our mediator. For there's one mediator between God and man, the man and God, Jesus Christ.
Christ. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored, again, this is Elizabeth talking, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, how did she know that? She's filled by the Holy Spirit. And she realizes that the mother of Jesus, the mother of her Lord, is coming to her. What a profound theological insight. And, of course, Elizabeth didn't think of it on her own. She didn't read it in a theology book or a textbook or anything like that. The Holy Spirit lets her know that as she's filled with the Holy Spirit. And folks, if you'll study on your own independently, if you'll read the Word, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will speak to you also and tell you things to do or not to do or warn you if you're thinking about doing something wrong. So take the time during this holiday season to listen to that still, small voice within. And I guarantee you the Holy Spirit speaks to His children, and He will definitely speak to you. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then she tells Mary, As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. How was John the Baptist joyful in his mother's womb? Because he heard the one who was going to give birth to Jesus. And he was the forerunner. Again, God's divine work, stitching it all together to make it happen. Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. So folks, during this season, never forget the true reason for the season the person of Jesus Christ, the birth of our Savior, the one that would one day tread up Calvary's hill and die freely on a cross. He said, no man takes my life from me. I give my life up willingly. He would do that out of love for you personally and love for me. Why? So we could be with God for all eternity and be reconciled to God and live one day in a perfect world called heaven with our Lord and our loved ones that have gone on before that accepted Christ as Savior. So don't forget that as we come into this season and remember the way God is working. You see all three members of the Godhead involved, the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary, the power of the Most High overshadowing her, the child that's going to be born will call the Son of God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. There for you and there for me. So keep your faith and remember really what Christmas is all about. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this first Sunday of Advent. We light a candle to remember what, how special it is as we observe the Advent season and the birth of our Savior. And thank you for not leaving man to his own devices but reaching out and saving. Just like in the Old Testament, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Here Mary finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Father, you used her in such a special way to give birth, even though she was a virgin, to the Christ child. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Folks, being December the 1st, 2024, being the very first Sunday of the month, we regularly celebrate the Lord's Supper here on the website of the church. So if you haven't already prepared ahead of time after listening to last week's message, if you want to put me on pause, you can do so and get yourself a little bit of grape juice and a small piece of bread as we're going to have the Lord's Supper today and celebrate Holy Communion. God is not limited by personal presence. You can commune with the Lord there in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching, on whatever device you're watching. And you can commune with me as we partake of the Lord's Supper and remember Holy Communion. Folks, the scripture tells us on the night that Jesus was betrayed, after they'd eaten the Passover meal, that Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. If you would partake now as I partake of the bread, the body of Jesus that was broken for us.
Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. You allowed cruel Roman spikes to pierce his hands and his feet, a crown of thorns to be beaten down upon his forehead, and a cruel Roman spear to pierce his side. His body was broken so that we might be made whole. He was despised and rejected that we might be loved and accepted. Thank you, thank you, Father, for the precious body of Christ. Amen. Scripture goes on to say, after they had finished, he took the cup, and listen closely, he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you remember the Lord's death till it comes. We're not redeemed with perishable things such as silver or gold, with the, with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without spot and blemish. So if you would partake now of the cup as I do. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the precious blood of Christ shed as a lamb without spot or blemish. Holy blood to make a holy sacrifice to make the unclean acceptable before you. Thank you, thank you, Father, for the blood that ran down from the cross that cleanses all who believe, you and I all together. Thank you, thank you, Father, for the precious blood of Christ. In Christ's name, Folks, I don't think we'll ever really fully understand this side of eternity, what's involved in the Lord's Supper and in communion. John Wesley said, at best, it's a mystery. But it draws us closer as we think about what Jesus did for us, how much he loves us, and what he was willing to do. Greater love has no man than this than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus told us. I wish you a joyous Christmas season. Please be careful as you're out there driving around shopping for gifts and everything, a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, and a lot of commotion. But really remember the true reason for the season, the birth of our blessed Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you next week for our second week of our Advent celebration, December the 8th. Take care, and God bless.